are the living word. Mm. Hey, hey. Jesus. That's what we call you. scripture here and we was talking in John a little bit and I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little ahead of myself but that's all right it's all right he said in the beginning was the word yeah. all right. All right. and the word was with God yeah 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 and the word was God hey. ah, I can stop right there and we just go home more scripture and we'll get to that. It's all gonna make sense in the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the songwriter said, You are the living word. It said, Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call yes. you. Hey. Bread of heaven. Yes. Sent down from glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. The scripture, and I know I know it was intimidating because I know Deacon Darrell was up here and it's like, look, there's a whole lot of scripture up here. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you all had the information. Yes. We're not gonna read it all word for word today. That's all right. Uh, right now, but I want you to take Take it home with you and marinate on it a little bit. Take your time, please. Because we're coming out of Book of John and it's chapter 6. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll focus a good bit today at verse 35. Yes, yes. And then we'll jump down a little bit, verses 41 through 51 of the New Living. And so I'll read those scriptures for you so you know where we're at today. Yes. So verse 35, and it says, Jesus replied... I am the bread of life. Hey. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry Come again. Mm -hmm. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Come Amen. On. Ooh, that's a bold statement right there. I know Come that's on. right. Come on. Come on. So we're going to come down a little bit further here, and we'll jump to verse 41. It should be on the back side of the, uh, the insert. Amen. And it goes on to say, Then the people began to murmur in disagreement. Because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Mm. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Okay? They said, well, isn't this Jesus, son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. Mm -hmm. Ain't that Mary and Joseph, baby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one that they ain't had no room in the end with, that one? Mm. That's, okay. So he... So, in the head. They said, well, we know who he is. Come down from heaven, they questioned. Mm. But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. Oh. He said, looky here now. Well, hmm. for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. Mm. And at the last day, I will raise them up. Yeah, yeah. As it is written in the scriptures, he said he got receipts. Okay. Yes. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Amen. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father. Only I, who was sent from God, has seen him. Amen. And here we are going to stick with uh, the narrative of God in the masculine because these words are written in red, so I don't want to misquote Jesus, okay? <laughs> uh, but we know that we understand God to be Spirit, Amen. and no gender. Hey, hey. So, get the proper context. So then he goes on to say, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. So if you believe what I say, yes. if you believe that I am who I say I am, if you believe that I am the bread of heaven that is sent down from glory, uh -huh. you will have eternal life. Amen. He said, yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. Mm. You know, that's my favorite story in there. That's the Moses uh, Moses uh, stories in there. They're wandering in the wilderness and they were right. hungry. And some manna fell down from heaven and it was like dew. And they were scooping it up and they ate that. Mm. That's what they're talking about right here. They were well, referring back yes. to the old stories. So anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. Hey! Hey! Verse 51 says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. Amen. So I was like, okay. So Jesus is laying it out right here in these scriptures. Here, and you get into to, to, to understand what was going on here. 
why he's talking about bread and life and all of this other kind of stuff. Like the other day, the day before, if you jump back a little bit further in the scripture, I think it's like uh, the beginning of chapter six, Jesus had just fed the 5,000. Mm, yeah. So he done fed these people and then now they're chasing after him. They're like, hey, where Jesus at? <laughs> y'all seen him? Cause he also walked on water. He fed the people. Yes. Hmm. I'm pretty sure he was tired after that. He well, stole away to be by himself to recoup that self-care that right. we talk about Jesus does and gives us the example of. Yes, yes. He got away by himself and found a way to sneak away to the other side of the lake. He walked across the water. They were like, yo, who that? I'm like, yeah, it's me. Don't worry about it. So they laid him the right? So he wake up the next day, and he's done all these miraculous things. Well, and the people was like, yo, where Jesus at? Mm. He showed his hungry, <laughs> right? So that's what's happening here. And so he has to set them straight because he, he really was like, look, y'all don't really care about the miraculous stuff I did. Y'all just here because I fed you. That's what happened. So that's what's happening right here. And so we get to this bread of life kind of thing, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm reading these scriptures, and that's why I gave you all the scriptures because it starts to get real sci-fi. Um, a couple of verses down, like around 53, which is on there, because I, I said, look, y'all need to understand what I just read. This thing mm. is real science fiction. Mm. That's right. And so my first point, and I'm going to read these, these verses for to you. It says, Jesus being the bread of life is not some sort of vampire tale. Mm. Like, because it, it, it sounds real sci-fi-ish right here. It says, about verse 53, it says, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Look, I like vampire stories. <laughs> I like that. So I'm sitting here thinking about, um, you know, interview with the vampire, Brad Pitt and uh, 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 Tom, Cruise. Tom Cruise. That's it. You know, I'm like, whoa, okay. You know, eat the flesh, drink the blood. You can't have eternal life without it. So I'm thinking vampire stories. But you can't look at this story as like a vampire folklore tale. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like one of those, like, like the vampires do. You don't just eat and drink one time and then you're immortal. Well, it don't happen like that. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It gets, it, 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 it's a lot deeper than that. That's right. Yeah. Jesus said he is the bread of life. And so I had to take a look at this thing and I said, well, I got to look at this through John's eyes. He's the one who is writing the story. His point of view is the lens that we have here to make it make a little bit of sense. Because even the people here was like, bro, what you talking about? <laughs> they was like, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying, so I'm just going to dip out this way. If you ain't passing out no fish sandwiches, uh, I'm going home. Well, yeah. And that's real. That's what happened. So John's point of view here is in the scripture that we read a little bit earlier. And he opens up his book like this. He's like, look, in the beginning mm -hmm. was the word. In the beginning, there was the word. In the beginning, there was the bread. Yes. It was life. And the word was God, was with God. Mm -hmm. So it was up there in the ethers, all up in here, right? Yes. And then the word was God. So all of this is mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. up in here. But then John makes it plain. He's like, you know, well, my point of view, the way that I see this whole thing going down is that the word became flesh. That's so right. it made its way here mm -hmm. so that we can understand it and interact. Mm -hmm. We can touch the word. That's right. We can see the word. We can hear the word. We can experience the word. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He's talking about Jesus here. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this with this with this particular point of view, that 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 it's not a vampire tale. You don't do it just one time <laughs> and be like, oh, I done bit Jesus, and now I'm I'm, I'm saved forever and ever. Amen. It don't work that way. Wow. You don't just eat and drink one time in the physical realm. So it makes you think that we can just eat and drink one time in the spiritual realm. It don't work that way. Preach. We got to eat every single day so that we don't fall out. That's right. We got to cook something up every day that's nourishing. Mm -hmm. 
so that we don't hunger and have our stomachs growling all over the place like that. Mm -hmm. We got to drink some water every day so that we're not dehydrated. That's right. So if we have to do this with our physical bodies, what makes you think that we don't have to do this with our spiritual bodies? Mm. It's not a vampire tale. We don't just fight it one time and then <laughs> we just immortal. Right. Come on now. That's not how you achieve this eternal life that Jesus is offering you. Well. You have to partake daily. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every day. Well, how do we eat? Because that part, I was like, well, look, I don't understand. You know, he's talking about, well, you got to eat the flesh and drink the blood. And, you know, you can't, you, you got to do all of these things. How do you do that? Jesus make it pretty plain. Yes, he does. It's not that hard. It's not all, ooh, ooh, like it's something crazy. It's, it's very, very simple. Jesus tells us. He says, all you got to do is believe. Amen. All you have to do is believe. That's how you eat. That's right. That's how you drink. That's how you partake in the bread of life. That's how you should be looking to experience and interact with Jesus every day. Just believe. Wow. That's it. That's right. It's simple. Yes. We make it real hard. Mm. You know, with a lot of our churchiosities. <laughs> You know, we have to do all of this. We got a back bend for the Lord, and you know, we gotta do all of this. We gotta lay out on the floor, and we gotta, you know, just, just, just give and give and give and give and give and give and give. But it's not that hard. It's simple. Just believe. Just yeah. believe, huh? And I said, okay then. Well, I think I'm, 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 I'm pretty good there. Fairly good there. I believe. I believe. Hmm. Even when it's hard, I believe. Mm. Even when it sounds a little bit crazy. I'm like, are you serious? Mm. <laughs> I believe still. Amen. There's a song that's been sitting on, on, on my spirit the past couple of past week or so, and, and uh, uh it's a it's a Ty Tribbett song, and I know we feel some type of way sometimes about Ty, but that's all right. <laughs> the song is still anointed, I listened to it and it's gotten me through. <laughs> and it's called Anyhow. He said, I'm going to give my hallelujah anyhow. Mm. I'm going to give my belief anyhow. I'm going to eat and drink anyhow. Even though it's difficult, I don't always understand it. But it didn't say you have to understand it. It says you have to believe. Amen. And it speaks to faith. Yes. And I said, okay. All right. Well, what else can I learn here about this, this bread of life? And partaking and understanding and I sat there and I was like, okay, I got a little bit, I got a little bit in there, and I and I and I read it and I understood it, but then it came to me and I came to understand that your point too is you don't have to be at the table to eat. Mm. Well, and I said, well, what does that mean? Because mm. we talk every single communion Sunday about welcoming people to the table, and there's more than enough seats at the table, but you don't have to be at the table to eat. And that about blew my mind right there. <laughs> and I said, well, make it make sense, God. That's right. That's right. Jesus, I'm believing. Can you help me out? What do you mean we don't have to be at the table to eat? A little earlier in the text, um, and I don't think I have it printed out, but it's, um, it's, it's a little bit earlier when they're telling the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we're familiar with that, that story. Jesus, they done, they done followed him all over the place. He's teaching, he's preaching, and then it comes about dinner time. He's like, oh, well, what are we going to do? Yes, yes. And so, you know, he, 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 he gathers up the five loaves and the two fishes, or two fish, fish, fishes, what have you, and, 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 and spread it out amongst the people and everybody ate. So in there, about verse 11, it says, Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks, said, bless this food we about to receive. Um, and distributed them to the people mm -hmm. after he did the same with the fish. And then they all sat down and ate everything that they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Mr. Fred, he said, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. Mm -hmm. So they picked up the pieces and filled up 12 baskets mm. of the leftovers. And I was like, hmm. So Jesus, um, 
Pretty smart guy. Yes. Jesus knew what he was talking about. Jesus came with receipts, right? Well. So, I would like to think that Jesus knew ahead of time how much food he was going to need to feed these 5,000 people. Because he asked one of his disciples, he said, you know, about how much you think it's going to cost to feed all these folks? And he's like, man. <laughs> he said, look, it's going to take about a year's worth of uh, wages to feed this many people. Uh. So Jesus knew what, what, was, what was going on. Jesus knew what it was hitting for, but there was still extra uh -huh. left over. Why? Everything is always planned. There's always a reason for the why. And I'd have to say, I want to look at this thing. This thing is, it had to be the first cookout to go plate. Like it was <laughs> Tupperware. It was the first to go plate. <laughs> Recorded. Because there were leftovers. And we didn't just leave the leftovers just out for the birds and the buzzards and all the animals to eat. He said, gather it up so it's not wasted. Amen. I tell you again, I was like, you don't have to be at the table to eat. Because what do you think they did with the leftovers? They went and fed somebody that wasn't at the table. Amen. So I looked at this and I said, this brand of life. You don't got to be at the table to eat. Amen. You don't have to be there at the table to eat. If somebody's at the table, they can make you a to-go plate. That's right. Come on. Come they on. can pick you up some stuff and take it home. Come on, come on. Yeah. They can come and tell you about this thing that they had heard about Jesus and this thing that Jesus was offering. Yes. Yeah. You can go home with that thing and say, yo, this dude named Jesus said he's the bread of life and he's offering eternal life. All you got to do is believe. Oh. And you take that and you give it to somebody else. You don't have to be at the table to eat. Amen. Right. You don't have to be in the room. Like we get a little bit discouraged that you know what, we ain't got a mega church numbers and this place ain't packed to the hill. That's okay. That's okay. This is the table. Hey! This is the table. Yeah. And that's okay that not everybody's at the table with us right now. We're going to gather up what's left mm -hmm. and take it out so nothing is wasted. Yes. We're going to give it to the people. We got outreach coming up. Yeah. And I know we schedule right now to talk about herd immunity and all of these things, but we can also slip in some of these leftovers from the table. That's oh. right. That's what Jesus would do. Yeah. We're taking it to the streets, ain't we? Yeah. Taking it to the streets. <laughs> I tell you, I was like, you don't have to be at the table to eat. Because I had to understand it, and, and it came to me because... Even though we use a lot of these words and things like that in our communion narrative, these events right here happened months and months and months before we even got to the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. So this isn't what Jesus is actually specifically <laughs> talking about, which is like, he's like, you know what? It's the bread of life. But it's not this communion. You're not doing this to remember me. This is so that you can commune with me and you can... Be involved with the things that I'm doing and you can share this good knowledge that I'm teaching you. That's what he's talking about here. It's not about remembering Jesus because we ain't even at that point in the story yet. Huh. You don't have to be at the table to eat. So I was like, by then I was about done. I said, okay, so where are we going? What's the last thing that we should take away from Jesus being the bread of life? What's the last thing that we need to think about? Because we talked about it's not like a one and done kind of deal. Where you just eat one time and you got eternal life. I know some of the places we've been, that's how they try to tell us that's how it is. Are you good? You saved now. Are you really? How's your spirit right now? Mm. Well, come on, come on. Well, is your spirit dehydrated? Well. <laughs> Have you given it some nourishment? Come on now. It's not a one and done, done kind of deal. No. We understand now that you don't actually have to be at the table to eat. We can take a plate home to somebody. That's right. We can take a plate home to somebody who don't even have a table or a house or an oven or microwave or anything <laughs> to cook their own food. That's right. Yeah. You don't have to be at this table to eat. The last thing that I want us to think about here is actually an affirmation. 
We need to wake up and affirm every day that I am also the bread of life. Hey, come on. Come on now. again for somebody. I am also the bread of life. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I, I am the bread of life. I am yes, the bread of life. Hmm. I am the bread of life. Powerful. It's funny because the people, like, people look funny. But the way that they're recorded in, in, in the scriptures is, 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 is just very true to life. Like, around verses 30 or so, and it's in there. They're talking to Jesus, and they're like, you know, well, show us a sign that you are who you are. Show me what you can do. And after all, you know, they're talking about how their ancestors ate the manna out there in the wilderness as they're walking around. And when I'm looking at how people are, I kind of see that, you know, we, we, we tend to do a lot of the same things. The, the Jews here, when they're referring back to the old ways and, and the laws of Moses and all of that kind of thing, they're getting caught up in the laws. They're getting stuck where they're at. They're debating on what Moses said, and we got to do it this way because Moses said, and, well, you know, we should listen to Moses because he was the liberator at that time. That's right. At that time. They get caught up and they get lost in the messenger who is bringing the message and don't pay attention to any of the message. That's right. Yes. And so I am the bread of life. That's a reminder to me to not just get caught up in this, in this narrative of what Jesus did. We can do the same thing. Because we do the same thing to Jesus. We get so stuck on what Jesus said and what Jesus didn't say and mm. how it's recorded and who wrote it down. We get stuck in the message of Jesus. Right, that's true. The messenger. Yeah. In who he was, what he looked like. Well, did he have long hair or short hair? Was he light skinned or dark skinned? Does it matter? It all mattered. Jesus had already completed his task on earth. He done did what he came to do. And then he ascended on and he left some instructions. He said, all right now. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, anybody that's eaten, anybody that's at the table with me, will do the same works I have done, even greater works. Come on, come on, come on. He said, because I am going to go and be with the Father. He's like, I done did what I was supposed to do right here. I done fed you, physically and spiritually. Wow. I done came to liberate you and free you and do all of these things, and now it's time for me to go on back. That's right. Yeah. Come on. But the world didn't end when Jesus left. Mm -hmm. We are still here. And what does that mean for us? That means that we are the bread of life now. Mm -hmm. It is our job to go on out there and start cooking up fish sandwiches. <laughs> Y'all yeah. understand, like, look, it is not by chance that we do fish fries in the church. Amen. Come on. Come on now. Come on. That's right. It's not by chance that we have moved on and done chicken dinners mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. We can feed folks physically, yes. but we also need to understand that it is now our job to be the bread of life. It is our job to free other people. It is our job to liberate folks and to offer them this eternal life that we done scooped up for ourselves at the table. Amen. Amen. We can't allow ourselves to let folks not at the table go hungry. And it's okay. Like, when we do this, when we are out here in these streets, we don't have to always say church this, church that, church this, church that. Jesus didn't have no church. He didn't have no pulpit to sit from. He was walking around in the streets. That's right. And he said, look, I want to offer you something great. Y'all want some of this? And it was your choice. It was a choice. I laugh because um, <laughs> my person said, don't talk about hey, because I was first, I was like, look, eat the cake. But you can't do it that way. That was a forceful kind of way. You always have a choice. Mm -hmm. So you can have a choice to pull up a chair. You have a choice to take the, um, the to-go plate. Mm -hmm. It's always a choice. 
Jesus isn't going to force you. So I looked at this thing. Bread of life. Eating and drinking. Having an eternal life. What does that look like? Yeah. Eternal life. Mm. Life that goes on and on and yeah. on and on. Yeah. What does that look like? What does it all mean? Because we can get stuck in the day to day and be like, I was sitting up last night and I was like, why am I even here? I don't understand it. I don't like it. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand any of the technology. I don't understand any of the music that the kids are singing. I don't understand any of this. Why am I here? <laughs> Somebody answer me this question. Yeah. Why am I here? We can get stuck in just this little slice of life that we can understand in this physical realm. But life is eternal. There is more after this. Mm. If we eat, and if we drink and not let our souls and our spirits become dehydrated. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.